have done it. It was a great game. You were the first African-American to work at Network News, correct? I mean... One of the first, I think. One of the first. I think there may have been someone else. But I was uh, first to produce, direct, and write documentaries there. When I first came in, I was... I come from being a professor and chairman of an art department into television. Okay, uh, I had written something that I had uh, uh, had received some wide attention. I appeared was supposed to appear on a program uh, talking about the civil rights movement, and instead the producer of the show said, "Really, come and work with ABC and write, etc." And I said. No, thank you. But then when I uh, compared the offer for television and my salary as a professor, I immediately took the job <laughs> at ABC. Uh, it was a struggle at first because I came in directing documentaries that were expensive, big, and I had to deal with people who had never dealt with a African American as the man in charge. So I had difficulty with people being willing to take my direction. And uh, also, I was looked at very carefully about my writing skills and all of that. But what you do is you just forge ahead. I did my job. We were very successful. The documentaries did very well. And in one instance, uh, Frank Reynolds, who was at the time the anchor for ABC Network, he was supposed to do one of the interviews in one of my documentaries. He got sick, couldn't do it, and I had to fill in for him. And at that point, when it was seen, some of the top brass at ABC said, why not come on be on air? And I thought, do I want to do this? But I thought I should, not only for the expansion of the idea of a black man, an African-American male, being at the network as a network correspondent. So I took the job, and um, one of my first stories I had to cover was the uprising at Attica, which was very traumatizing, where I almost died. Uh, because of the violence, the racism, people screaming at me, they were going to shoot me. I was gassed and all of that. And I said, gee, is this what being a network correspondent is? This is we are the people we're reporting to. And it's, in fact, very pertinent for today. Donald Trump says that uh, the press is the enemy of the people. Well, in fact, that we, the press, are the people. And what Eyewitness News did under Primo and all of that was to make the audience closer and us closer to the audience because, indeed, he had a staff of people who reflected the entire audience that we were talking to. We were brown, white, Latino, black. I, I mean, we were everything, everything that New York is. Well, I must say, uh, my mother was very proud of me because everywhere we went, I mean, people were saying, gee, that's your son, John Johnson. And it, w it was different. It was almost like being a little bit of a rock star. Uh, people would know you everywhere that um, we became really part of the community who really identified with us and took us in and there was a mutual love relationship and uh, it was it was profoundly warming and lovely really. I, I covered the war in the Middle East, the war in Bosnia, the war in uh, Somalia, I covered the O.J. Simpson trial. You were there when Nelson Mandela came out of jail. This is what I'm scared and that moment I was there in South Africa when the great Nelson Mandela got out of jail. When you look back mm -hmm. on your years at WABC, yes. you proud? I am. 
I think I did my duty. I never felt that I took it anything for granted. I was committed to, and especially being uh, uh, also a minority, I felt that it was imperative for me to show that man of intellect, of culture, who believe that we're all equal, we're, we are here to help one another and to understand. And I was, my job was to bring the truth to make it a better world. That was my job. And it was an honor to have that ability to do that job. And also, I met some wonderful people in doing it, both in front of the camera and behind the camera.